We've been spending a lot of time on exponential equations and logarithmic equations, and now we're going to look at applications that involve both exponential and logarithmic equations. And so let's go through and look at some of these formulas, and you've probably seen these formulas in past algebra class. So let's look at the following formulas. We have the simple interest formula, and this states if the principal P dollars is borrowed for a period of T years and a per annum of interest rate R expressed as a decimal. So R always has to be written as a decimal when we plug these into plug R into the equation. And the interest I changed in charged is I is equal to PRT. Okay, so interest is equal to the principal, how much I've invested, R is equal to the interest rate in terms of decimal, and T is equal to the number of years. If we're looking at a compound interest formula, um, so the one above was giving us what we made in interest. This problem here is giving us what amount we're getting back, or O, after a certain amount of time. So the amount A after T years due to the principal P invested at an annum, annual interest rate R, again, R has to be expressed as a decimal, compound N times per year is the following. So A is equal to P, then in parentheses, we have one plus R over N, and then that is all raised to the N T power. So the amount A is typically referred to as the accumulated value of the account, and P is called the present value. So your book uses those terminologies for those things. So the next um, formula is continuous compounding. The amount A after two years due to the principal P invested at an annual interest rate of R compounded continuously is the following. A is equal to our principal P times E, and that E is raised to the RT power. So if we look at the following, that compounded um, interest formula, in times a year, and let's say that we wanted to solve for P. So let's look at this equation. A is equal to P, one plus R over N, raised to the N over T. So maybe we know what amount we need, how much time we have invested, um, how many times it's going to be compounded in a year. We know what the interest rate is, but we don't know how much we need to invest in order to get that amount back. And so we could solve for P here. Normally, I wouldn't do this until I plugged in my all my values and then was trying to isolate P. But your book uh, gives the formula of P is equal to, but I just want to go through how you get that. And if you want to memorize another formula, you can, um, but you don't need to. So if we want to isolate P here, we could divide both sides of the equation by this parentheses, one plus R raised to the nth power, I'm sorry, R divided by N, all raised to the N divided, uh, N times T. Okay, I need to just slow down. It's a little early. So, what we do to one side of the equation, we got to do to the other. Okay, so notice that here we got P by itself is equal to, recall we could bring this parentheses that is underneath our A up into our numerator by making that exponent negative. So we could rewrite this as A all times one plus R over N raised to the NT. And because we moved this up into the numerator, 
we need to change the sign of our exponent to be negative. Remember, power of power is multiplication. And so we can rewrite this as P is equal to A all times one plus R over N raised to the negative NT power. We can do the same thing with our compounding um, continuously formula. We can solve here for P. And if we were to solve for P here, we would divide both sides by E raised to the R over T power, and we would get P is equal to, again, A all over E to the RT power. And we can bring that E up into the numerator by change the exponent to be negative. So here we're given that P is the same thing as A times E raised to the negative RT. Okay, so here are the formulas from the book that we just showed how we got those. So present value formula is what we were just looking at. The present value P of A dollars to be received after T years, assuming a per annum interest rate R compounded N times a year is the following. So P is equal to A times parentheses one plus R over N all raised to the negative NT power, which we derived. And then if the interest is compounding continuously, we saw that it was P equals A raised to the E um, negative RT power. Okay, so let's go through some examples. So let's say you have 700 invested at 6% compounded daily. And we want to find out how much we make um, after a period of two years. Okay, so we know principal and not the principal. Our amount is equal to our principal. I'm just going to write my formula one plus r over n raised to the n t. Okay, so let's put in what we know. We know what, how much we've invested. So we know our principal is $700. One plus the interest rate. Interest rate needs to be written in decimal form. And so the decimal form is 0 0.06, all over the number of times compounded a year. And it's telling us that it's compounded daily. So we're gonna use 365 days raised to the 365 times T, where T is the number of years that we've invested. So a lot of this is just being able to plug it into the calculator correctly. And so I would probably put this all in the calculator and how I would do that, I do the 700. I put an open parentheses, one plus 0 0.06 divided by 365. Close your parentheses. A lot of your calculators have this caret symbol showing that you're raising it to the power. You're gonna need a parentheses around that whole exponent because you're doing an operation there. So 365 times two and end that parentheses. So plugging this into the calculator, you should get that the amount that you would receive after that two years compounding daily is seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars 
and 24 cents. And if they ask us how much interest was earned, well, we could look at how much we've invested and then how much we got back. Okay, so we have that $789. 24 cents we got back minus the $700 that we put in. And so we've earned $89.24. So here we're trying to figure out what our principal needs to be to get $800 after two and a half years at an 8% compounded continuously. Okay, so we know what the amount is that we need. So we know that A is equal to our amount, which is 800, is equal to um, P, so that's the principle, this is what we're trying to find. E, because it's compounded continuously, raised to the interest rate, which is 0 0.08 in decimal form, all times T, the number of years. So I'm just gonna write it as 2.5. So to get P by itself, we're gonna divide by that E raised to that power. And so we can see that P is gonna equal 800 all divided by E raised to the, let's just multiply 0 0.08 right now times 2.5, which is 0 0.2. So 800 divided by E, excuse me, to the point two. Okay, so if this is correct, we need $4,000 to invest. Okay, so the next example wants to know how long will it take for an investment to triple If we have the following information, we're given that it's invested at 6% and it is compounded monthly. Okay, it didn't give us what our principal was, but we know that triple that principal we could just have as 3P. So we want to know our amount is equal to 3P. So we have 3P is equal to how much we're investing, P dollars. And we have, it's compounded monthly. So one plus the interest rate in decimal form. So 0 0.06 divided by the number of times compounded a year. So our N value is 12. 
all raised to the n, which is 12. And we're trying to find how long it will take. So we're trying to find t here. So we want to isolate this exponential piece. And so we want to get rid of the p in front of that parentheses. And we can do so by dividing both sides by p. So when we do that, all we have left is 3 is equal to that parentheses 1 plus, let's take 0 0.06 divided by 12, which is 0 0.01 raised to the 12 T. So we have three is equal to, well, one plus 0 0.01. So we have 1.01 .01 raised to the 12 T. We wanna, we need to know what the variable is, the variables in the exponent. So we're gonna use logarithms to help us solve this. And so we can take the log of both sides or the natural log, I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. So taking the natural log of both sides, we have the natural log of three is equal to the natural log of 1.01 .01 raised to the 12 T power. Now we can use, and the whole point of taking the logs was so that we can use our rules of exponents for logs. So we can bring that exponent down front and so we really have here that the natural log of three is equal to 12 T times the natural log of 1.01. .01. So the exact value for T, we would divide both sides by 12 natural log of 1.01. .01. So we would have the natural log of three all over 12 natural log of 1.01. .01. Okay, so if you weren't allowed a calculator, that's how you would you leave it. Um, let's plug it in and see what we get back. So we have the natural log of three, make sure you close off your parentheses and you plug it in the print, um, calculator. And then in the denominator, we have 12 and make sure you put parentheses around the whole denominator. So 12 natural log, parentheses 1.01, .01, close off parentheses, close off parentheses. And so we get back that T is equal to 9.2 years. So if we have some amount and we're looking for it to triple and how long that would take um, at 6% compounded monthly, it would be 9.2 years. Okay, so the next example, George contemplates um, the purchase of 100 shares of stock selling for $15 per share. The stock pays no dividends, um, the history of the stock indicates that it would grow at an annual rate of 15% per year. So how much should the 100 shares of stock be worth in 15 years? Okay, so we have 100 shares of stock and it's $15 per share. So let's figure out how much he purchased or how, um, how much money he spent. So we could look at that $15, right? Times a hundred stock. And so this is gonna give us $1,500. Okay, so that's how much he's invested. We are given that the interest rate that has been showing to make is 15% per year. So our R is equal to, Zero point one five, and we're given what time is five years. And this is an annual rate. So compounding n is 
مهم So we have our amount. <laughs> Excuse me. Is equal to how much invested? One thousand five hundred. All times one plus the interest rate zero point one five. All over the number of times compounded a year once. And this is all raised to the five times one power. So we have 1,500. This is one plus 0 0.015, sorry, 0.15. We get back 1.15. I'll raise to the fifth power. So order of operations, we have to raise that exponent first and then we can multiply it to that 1,500, or we can plug this in the calculator, but we need to make sure that we have 1,500, parentheses 1.15, and parentheses, and that parentheses is raised to the fifth. And if we do that, this is equal to $3,017.50. The next example says on January 1st, Kim places $1,000 in a certificate of deposit that pays 6.8% compounded continuously and matures in three months. Then Kim places the 1,000 and the interest in a passbook account that pays 5.25% compounded monthly. How much does Kim have in the passbook account on May 1st? Okay, so we're in months and not in terms of years. And so we know that a month is 1 12th of a year. She's, let's look at the first one. She places the 1,000 in a certificate of deposit that pays 6.8% compounded continuously and matures in three months. So let's first look at that. So let's see what the amount is. We got the amount that $1,000 invested. Compounded continuously, so this is E, raised to our interest rate, our interest rate in decimal form is 0 0.068. And the time is three months. And so three months is three out of 12 months in a year. Is equal to a quarter of a year. So for our time, we're gonna put in a quarter. So plugging it into the calculator, we get 1,000. Um, we have E, and that E is raised to the parentheses 0 0.068 times one quarter, which is 0 0.25. We do that, we get $1,017.15. Okay, so this is the amount that she's made. Well, and plus, really, she only made $17.15 in that three months. But she's going to take this amount, that $1,000 and that $17.15 that she made, and she places that $1,000 in the interest in the passbook account um, in a passbook account that pays 5.25% compounded monthly. Okay, so 
let's set up that formula. So we have A is equal to the amount that we even are going to invest, which is that $1,017.15. One plus the interest rate. This interest rate is 0 0.0525. All over the number of times that it's compounded a year. So it's compounded monthly. So it's compounded 12 times a year. All raised to the NT. So the number of times compounded a year, which is 12. But she is gonna pull or want, we wanna know how much she's made May 1st. Okay, well, let's see how much long it, it's been invested. Well, she invested it because she pulled her money out after three months, starting January 1st. So, so it's been in there. So January 1st to February 1st is one month. February 1st to March 1st is another month. March 1st. So January is one month, February is one month, and then March is gonna be the other month. And so we're gonna invest it in April 1st, and we wanna know how much in May 1st. Well, that's only one month that it's in there. And so if we look at one month, we need to convert one month in terms of years. And one month in terms of years is 1 12th. So plugging these in this into the calculator, we can figure out how much was made. So that amount that we would get back on May 1st, or Kim would get back on May 1st, is going to be So Jerome wants to buy a car and he'll be buying a used car for $15,000 in three years. How much money should he ask his parents for now so that if he invests it at 5% compounded continuously, he would have that money to buy the car? Okay, so we know how much money we want back. We know that we want back the amount A to be $15,000. This is equal to some principle, and that's what we're trying to find, some P. And it's compounded continuously, so that is E raised to the interest rate R in decimal form, so 0 0.05. And we know that he wants this back in three years. So if we got P by itself, we could divide both sides of the equation by that E raised to the well, three times five is 15, moving that decimal place over twice because of the 0 0.05, E would be raised to the 0 0.15 power. So plug in that into the calculator. We have 15,000 divided by E raised to the 0.15. So the parents would need to give him $12,910.62 so that he can invest that money and have his $15,000 in three years.
Okay, so this problem says in 2018, the federal debt was about $21 trillion. In 2018, the US population was about 327 million. Assuming that the federal debt is increasing about 5.5% per year, and the US population is increasing about 0.7% per year, determine the per capita debt, the total debt per by population, um, divide, so the total debt divided by the population in 2030. Okay, so we need to figure out how much money we're gonna owe in 2030, and we need to figure out what the population is in 2030. So we are in debt about $21 trillion. And so I'm gonna keep it as 21, but I know that this is in terms of trillions. And so I have 21, um, let's see. Assuming that the federal debt is increasing about 5.5% per year. Okay, so we have one plus our interest rate, 0 0.055 um, per year. So over one, it doesn't sound like it's being compounded any particular number of times a year raised to the NT. So number of times a year is one. So we need to figure out how many years. Well, this was in 2018. And so in 2030, our time is gonna equal um, 12 years. Let's do our debt. So let's have that be D. So we have 21 times 1.055. And that 1.055 is raised to the 12th power. Okay, so according to this formula, the U.S. will have a debt of $39.93 trillion. Okay, so now we want to go through and we want to figure out what the population is going to be. And so our population, well, our population was 327 million. Okay, so I know my answer is going to be in millions at the end. And it's increasing about 0.7% per year. So we have one plus 0 0.07 per year, and that's gonna be 12 years. So plugging that in the calculator, we have 327, which is really millions, times 1.07 and that 1.07 is raised to the 12th power. So in this case, we would have 400, sorry, not 400, 4,198.68 million people. Okay, so now we not need to figure out, determine the total debt um, per capita. And so we need to look at the debt in trillions.
I gotta think about trillions for a second. Okay, so that's trillions. This would be billions, millions, thousands, hundreds. So we have 12 zeros there all over. And so we have this 4198.68. And this is millions. So we have 1 million. Well, we could start canceling out zeros that we have in common in the numerator and denominator. And that would give us, looks like 1 million times this 39.93. Well, let's take away two of those zeros to move this decimal over twice, and that would leave us with four zeros afterwards. So three, nine, nine, three, zero, 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 zero. All over 4198.68. So that would equal $9,510.13 is what we would owe per person in the U.S. in 2030 if things continue to grow at the rate that they were saying. 